In Chaucer's Tale of Sir Topaz, in the Canterbury Tales, the prioress's tale has a sobering effect on the company, and Harry Bailey calls on Chaucer himself to tell a tale of mirth. The tale Chaucer delivers is divided into fits, an archaic word for a division in a poem or song. In the first fit, Chaucer begins with a story about Sir Topaz, a knight so handsome, rich, and accomplished that young women long to be with him. However, he was chased, and while out riding in the forest, he hears a bird singing, and the sound of it causes him to fall into an overpowering love longing for an elf queen mistress. To find such an elfin woman, he makes his way to Fairyland. He's confronted by a giant. He challenges the giant to a duel. Sir Topaz's friends and servants help him prepare for the duel. They give him sweet spiced wine and clothe him in fine clothes and elaborate armor. During the second fit, Chaucer again asks the company to be quiet and listen to his story. As he continues, Harry Bailey interrupts him, saying his story is illiterate and that the rhymes are purgatory. Chaucer agrees to tell a story in prose instead. The humor of this tale lies in the difference between the reader's and the pilgrim's reactions. Harry Bailey sums up the pilgrim's reaction. He says, it is not worth a turd. While Harry Bailey may think Chaucer the Pilgrim is illiterate, readers know Chaucer is just having a bit of fun. In this fragment of a story, Chaucer is at his most satirical. Common in Chaucer's time were romances full of stock noble characters and predictable plots. In telling such a tale, he uses ridiculous verse to make fun of how ridiculous the story is. A perfectly moral knight who must duel for the love of a beautiful and unattainable fairy queen the sheer awfulness of the entire package betrays the glee with which Chaucer writes this parody. Springtime, with its blooming flowers and singing birds, figures heavily in the story. Sir Topaz, normally a man of self-control, is suddenly undone by a bird's song. All of the sensuality of spring gives him such a powerful longing for a metaphysical woman. His reaction underscores the situational irony of other pilgrims' tales, such as the Knights, where noble heroes are blatantly motivated by the same base desires.